What's going on, everybody? Happy Saturday. I hope you guys survived your week all right and are getting some much-needed rest and relaxation in today. If not, and you're like me and you're doing yard work and stuff around the house, hopefully you got a time to take a break. That being said, let's just jump into today's video, shall we? Um, I want to cover one thing real quick, uh, and that is if we launch a terminal and we zoom in, um, you can see I'm on kernel 6.1.21 underscore one. Um, and there's been some issues going on on certain machines uh, with kernel 6.1. Maybe you already know about this, maybe you don't, but the brightness controls stopped working. Um, the brightness controls on my computer stopped working, and so I kind of been Googling around and looking at stuff, and I found that this is a common issue. Um, a lot of people are having this issue. There's some fixes there that work for people, but for me, it just hasn't worked. I actually spent yesterday rebuilding um, not rebuilding, excuse me, uh, repairing my system that I borked when I was trying to actually fix the issue because I was so concerned about not having working brightness keys. Um, the brightness works. I can adjust the brightness um, using um, a brightness control command like I use Lux. So if I do Lux dash S and do 50%, you can see the the screen brightness changes. So it's not that I can't change it, but it's if I do X, E, V, and I hit my brightness control keys, you see nothing happens. If I hit my volume control keys, you can see I get output. If I hit any other key, I get output. But when I do my brightness control keys, I get nothing. So something's going on with that. Um, it does work on my Artix partition, but my Artix partition is running a later kernel. So I'm thinking that it might just have something to do with kernel 6.1. So if you're having brightness control issues, you're not alone, you're not the only person, something's going on in kernel 6.1. And if you Google it, there are some workarounds that work for other people, I just haven't found one that works for me yet. So that's the end of that. I just wanted to cover that briefly and let you guys know that's what's going on. But let's go ahead and talk about what I've got going on on my system now. So um, I was doing my void setup or my DWM setup on void um, and I was doing that on a VM but if you recall in my last video I had moved everything over to hardware because setting up a bar is just easier on hardware than it is in a virtual machine um, and so here we are this is my pseudo finished um, DWM setup I still got a little bit of tweaking to do but this is my working machine and we're going to kind of cover the patches I used and we're going to cover um, how to well we've already covered how to a patch but I'm going to just kind of go into the config file and show you um, how to kind of write everything out um, so let's go ahead and launch that terminal again let's zoom in and I know I said this was going to be a suckless build and so you can see I'm running ST for my main terminal if I go ahead and launch my scratch pad here you can see I am running alacrity on my scratch pad so um, kind of an ST suckless build but excuse me ST a DWM or a suckless build but kind of not a complete suckless build because I'm not using surf browser and I'm not using D menu. I have D menu installed. If I press mod P, you can see I've got D menu installed. It comes up, but I am still using my FZF menus that I built that I just love so much. And so um, I've been using these for a while. Just a side note, uh, if you've watched DT's video, he's actually started doing this too. Um, so, um, little bit of competition here but I uh, just like to say I did it first <laughs> no offense DT I'm just uh, just bringing that up um, so let's go ahead and close that out um, and let's actually CD into my suckless directory which is where all my suckless tools are and if we do an LS you can see we've got D menu we've got DWM SL status and ST so first things first let's ST S, or CD into um, SL status and we're gonna do an LS and just like every other DW or uh, suckless util it's uh, got config.def.h, config.h, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and vim into config.def.h. This is going to be the file you're going to edit before you actually make the copy over to uh, config.h. Now you can just edit config.h, um, but if you make the mistake and uh, copy your config.def.h over to config.h after that, you're going to lose all your, all your edits. So I know it's one step more, but I still highly recommend editing the config.def.h, then copying it over, and then rebuilding. Or excuse me, recompiling. Um, so basically what we have here, I'm just running um, my command to get my YouTube subs right here. So it's basically just run command, comma, and then um, I have my icon there, and then percent %s, and then I got some spaces to give me a little gap between my modules, and then comma, and then we come over here and we echo out the script that we want to run. Same thing here for my volume. I am uh, echoing out PA mixer um, dash dash get volume. Um, so that's just going to give me my, my volume. It's just going to echo that out to my bar up here. And I'm using um, 
my battery script right here and that just gives me my battery percentage right here it shows me that it's uh, how full my battery is and shows me whether it's plugged in or not um, and then down here obviously I have date and time now that's all the bar the bar stops right here and then this over here is sys tray which is in our DWM configuration file so let's go ahead and write and quit out of there let's um, go back a directory and we're gonna CD into DWM we're going to do an ls and again you can see all our config.def.h and everything so let's vim into can actually let's go into let's cd into patches and this will kind of show what patches i've used let's clear the screen and do an ls um, you can see i've got quite a few patches going on i've got the alpha patch which allows for transparency in the status bar um, i have uh, D D dwm alternative tags which gives me the ability to have um, icons as opposed to the numbers but if i also hit mod n i can switch over to numbers and switch back um, I have always centered, uh, which I don't believe I have installed. Um, I'm debating on whether I'm going to put that in or not. Um, I do have the auto start patch, which is allowing me to use my DWM or my .DWM auto start since I am using a um, display manager as opposed to just using Xenet RC. Um, I use my bar height so I can change the height of my bar um, to allow for different size fonts. Um, I'm using cycle layouts, which allows me to, if I launch a whole bunch of windows here and I do mod control plus or mod control comma or period, it allows me to cycle through the different layouts. Um, DWM comes equipped with a lot more layouts than it used to um, out of the box. It used to be, um, I want to say just like three or four, and now it seems like there's a whole bunch of them. So um, it's just kind of weird. Um, so let's do an LS again. Now I have float border, which allows me to change the color of floating borders. So um, if there's a floating window, I can have it a different border color than the other windows, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, I have float rules, which also allows me to change window size and location on floating windows. So instead of all the floating windows spawning in the center or right up in the corner, I can put them wherever I want. Like if I do mod shift I, that's going to launch my void source packages menu, which is over here. I haven't moved it where I want it yet. I'm not going to keep it here, but um, as opposed to if I do mod shift D, you can see that launches right here in the center and up towards the top. So I like the fact that I can have my floating windows kind of open wherever I want to. Now preserve on restart. Um, before, if you did the mod shift mod control shift Q and did the auto reload of your configuration file or of the uh, uh, you know the yeah the config file, um, it would basically slam all of your windows on all your tags over onto the first tag. Well, what this preserve on restart does is keeps all your windows in the correct spot on the correct tags. It just moves you back to tag one. Um, restart sig is the one that allows you to. Um, do mod shift control or mod control shift Q after you um, recompile to allow you to not have to log out and log back in. I've got DWM scratch pad, which is the one I did on my video last week, which was the incorrect um, patch. And so I switched that over to scratch pads to allow me to have multiple scratch pads. Um, for scratch pads right now, I only have two. I have um, my file manager right here that I can slide into place. And I have obviously my um, scratch pad for my terminal. Um, I do have Swallow, which swallows terminal windows. Um, I don't think I have that one set up yet either. I might, but I might not. Um, and then SysTray, obviously, up here. Um, I have Title Color, which allows me to have a separate title color right here for my window titles, as opposed to just being the same color as my um, uh, active tag. And I have Vanity Gaps, which is um, those gaps that we put in at the very beginning. So let's go ahead and CD back one directory and vim into config.def.h and hit enter. And you can see that um, this is a little bit bigger than the normal config.def.h. And it's basically because we've got a lot of stuff added in here. These are the gaps right here. Um, we have the sys tray here. Um, we have uh, swallow floating is set to one. So yeah, it'll uh, swallow floating windows. Now, smart gaps, show top bar, bar height right here. I can change the bar height. Um, I can have different fonts here. I added the purple color here to my um, config file to allow me to have this nice purple here. Um, down here we have our nor scheme normal and our scheme select, but then underneath we have scheme title, which allows me to change that title um, window title color, like I was saying. Um, and then here we have our scratch pads. So these are a constant char, uh, spawn command one and spawn command two, and this is alacrity dash dash class sp term and st-n spfm-e ranger. So basically what this one does is just launch my alacrity window, my um, 
terminal. And ST, obviously, with uh, running Ranger is my file manager right there. And then you go down here and you have static SP scratch pads. So these are the scratch pads. The SP term is SPCMD1 and SPFM is SPCMD2. So that's uh, tied into these up here. So then we have right here, we have static const char tags. And that's going to be my um, icons that I have as opposed to the uh, numbers. But then we have tags alt, which is going to be my numbers. So like I said, if I um, actually do alt n, I can switch back and forth between the icons and the numbers. Um, and then um, you can have cons or static const uh, momentary alt tags, which means if I set it to 1, I will only show the alternative tags while the key is held down. So if I press the key, like say I did this, and hold the key down, it's only going to show them until I let go of the key, and then it's going to go right back. And down here we have our window rules, and when you do your um, scratch pads, when you come down here, you have to have window rules for your scratch pads. So we have right here, you just put them down in here. We have the SP term, and we have the SPFM after the null for class. And then um, we have null for title, and then you do SP tag in zero and one um, under the tag masks. They are floating, um, but then you can have zeros over here. I do have no swallow for them. Uh, monitor negative one, and then right here is remember how I said I have the patch for allowing to have our, my windows floating elsewhere. Right here is where you'd put the x and y coordinates, and then the width and the height, so you can change the width and height of your um, excuse me of your uh, floating windows. Um, now it doesn't work on the scratch pads that I've figured out yet um, I'm still working on that that's something I still want to play around with because I would like to have my scratch pads not quite so centered in my screen but if that's not possible I guess that's not possible um, right here we have static const float m fact um, 0.55 which basically is the master and stack so master is 50 about 55 percent of your screen as opposed to 45 for the stack um, if you've watched any of my other videos you'll know I like the uh, split master that way as opposed to the 50 50 split um, we have resizing hints. These are all the different layouts we have. Um, if we come down here, these are um, defining key tags. Um, and then right here is how we go about defining commands to run from our key bindings. So you can see that I have like um, D menu command to have D menu run. I have term command to launch ST, which is my main terminal. Um, I have static const char, um, mute command, volume up, and volume down command to run pactol, which is going to control my volume up here. Um, BR up command, BR down command for um, brightness up and brightness down. Now I wrote two scripts to try and control this when I was trying to figure out how to get my brightness controls to working before I realized it was a kernel issue. Um, so as of right now, I can't verify whether this works or not because my kernel is not... Uh, um, allowing my brightness keys to work. But now we have uh, static const char, we have Brave CMD, and then we have Brave Browser Nightly. So that's going to be, I'm going to call that to launch my browser. I'm going to call FF .c or FFCMD to launch Firefox. Uh, VSPCMD is going to launch my VSP uh, directory, which is my void source packages. So again, if I do mod shift I, you can see I launched my void source packages menu. And then my launch command for um, my launch menu is mod shift D, and you can see that that is called right here, launch command. So then if we want to run our X11, um, XF86 keys, our multimedia keys and stuff, you have to include this line right here, include X11, XF86, keysim.h. And including that line, then you can come down here and you can see you can add mod key is going to be zero, comma, and then you come over here and add the XF86 keys, audio mute, audio lower volume, audio raise volume, mon brightness up and mon brightness down. And then you run your command right over here. So it's going to run um, V mute command and it's gonna run, it's gonna spawn V equals vol down command, uh, spawn V equals vol up command. And then our, I've tried a few other different things as well, um, shell command um, to try and run a, um, program that I usually run to control my brightness is Lux. And again, that didn't work because my brightness keys don't work right now with the kernel. So those two don't work. But this spawn uh, shell command, this is how you get to run um, shell commands from key bindings. So if you have a script or something and you want to be able to run it with a key binding, you could use the shcmd command and then um, run it down here. Now to do this, if you go up here, you can see define shell command right here. This is what this is going to 
Um, this is what this is going to do. So divine, and you have the sh cmd, and then in parentheses you have the command you want to run, and then that's going to equal out this v equals const char, and it, so you could just write all this out right here, um, like I've done right here. I tried it both ways, um, but either one of these ways should work. Um, it's just your preference as to how you want to do it. So. Um, got those going. Um, so that's how we got the audio controls working and everything like that. This is how you write up commands to actually launch them with key bindings. Now you could do something simple like use um, simplex hotkey daemon and start that in your auto start file and then um, run your key bindings through simplex hotkey daemon, which is perfectly doable. Um, but again, I'm trying to keep this as close to a suckless build as I possibly can. And if you've watched my channel for any period of time, you know, I like to not have a whole bunch of extra stuff on my system. That's not necessary. Um, so if I ever load BSPWM or something on here that requires simplex hotkey daemon, then I'll probably do that. But um, as far as right now, I'm just not going to use it. I'm going to try and do everything natively through the uh, window manager that I'm using. Um, these are going to be your mouse buttons here. Um, so basically, let's just go ahead and take a walkthrough of my system. So this is my system, my desktop wallpaper and everything. You can see if I launch Windows um, on different workspaces, um, I have animations. Um, and uh, all kinds of stuff so that's going to be on nine i don't want to go over there because that's got but you can see i've got different animations going on for my windows um, i have my um, scratch pads loaded um, my multiple scratch pads and i have my void source packages menu i've got my regular menu i've got d menu launching um, I've got everything I could need to possibly do. If you watch up here in the corner and I use my volume keys, you can see my uh, volume changes up here. Uh, when I use my volume keys, maybe, maybe not. Uh, don't tell me those are messed up now too, huh? Well, I guess we'll find out in a minute. Maybe they're mute. Um, no, now I'm gonna have to figure out why those work. Well, they were working for a while, but I guess we're uh, having some, oh, I know why, duh, because I have D menu up. So now let's go ahead and change them. There we go. Uh, so sometimes you're just a little oblivious to what's going on, but uh, you can see my volume keys work. Um, that was a real quick uh, problem solving lesson, wasn't it? Uh, make sure you've got uh, things that are blocking up your system closed before you try to do other things. Um, but that's kind of what I got going on. Um, this is a full working, um, completely usable, 100% ready to go DWM uh, setup on void. Um, so if you follow this series, um, this is kind of what you can end up with and um, obviously make it your own do what you want with it but i think we've covered patching pretty well pretty well in this series um, we've covered uh, working with our config.def.h file working with sl status uh, building d menu um, and building suckless utils to actually get yourself a system and again i really like dwm i really like suckless and their tools and how they work and everything um, so i think this is a really good start for anybody wanting to get dwm and void up and going together. Um, so if anybody's got any other questions on it, uh, great, feel free to ask, you know how to get in touch with me. Um, you got my email and you can leave messages in the comments. Um, but other than that, I think that we're gonna put a bow tie on this series and call it done. Um, hopefully you guys learned a little bit and this helped you out some. So stay tuned, we've got uh, some great stuff coming up on this channel. Um, I'm really gonna try to hone in on um, just trying to make this a more, more practical for everybody. So. Um, I hope you guys had a great day. I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend and just stay safe, all right? And just, uh, hey, keep watching, like, subscribe if you haven't, and you know, show me some love. I see this number up here says 3.78. I'd really like to see that hit four. Um, obviously, I always said that at the beginning of this channel, this wasn't about growing this channel, and that's not ultimately my main goal, but you know, the more it grows and the, the more we see that number go up, we, re we really like to see that. So if you guys can help me, help me get up to 4,000, I'd really appreciate that. Um, like and share, subscribe, do what you gotta do. I greatly appreciate it. You guys have a great rest of your day. God bless.